Oh, hello and welcome to the old classic car channel and today's classic car brochure review is for the Ford Escort RS Turbo Series 1. Uh, this particular brochure dates to January of 1985. Uh, the Series 1 was produced between 1984 and 1986 and was very much the daddy of Ford's hot hatch range of the mid-1980s. You had the XR2 and with the Escort you had the XR3 and then the XR3i and the RS Turbo came along and that was sort of king of the castle, if you like, of Ford's hot hatches of that particular era. 127 miles an hour was on offer, uh, 0 to 60 in around 8.2 seconds, and uh, all available in diamond white. I believe one or two were built in alternative colours, but the catalogue describes diamond white as the only colour option that was available to buyers of the RS Turbo Series 1. So let's just have a quick look inside and see how Ford decided to market the RS Turbo. 36 years ago and we have on page one and two an introduction to the RS line the rally sport line uh, which went way back as it shows here back to the mark one Ford Escorts the new Escort RS Turbo is a thrilling reminder that Ford has been one of the biggest names in motorsports ever since Henry Ford started designing building and racing his own cars at the turn of the century and it goes back into a bit more details of Henry Ford etc competition successes in Grand Prix racing with the Ford Cosworth DFV which powered a multitude of F1 cars throughout the 60s and into the 1970s. Um, what more have we got here? Uh, Keith Duckworth, Cosworth Engineering is introduced and uh, it mentions the BDA engine, a 1.6 litre BDA, twin overhead cams, four valves per cylinder etc and it was destined to power Ford's first rally sport car, the crisp and charismatic RS1600 Escort. Like the new Escort RS Turbo, the RS1600 had a split personality. Although very fast for its day, top speed was about 115 miles per hour. The standard version with 120 brake horsepower on tap at 6,500 RPM was essentially a civilised road-going proposition. It had more performance than many rakish two-seaters, but was quite content to potter down to the supermarket or take the children to school. And then it goes on about the Escort Mexicos, uh, BDA's RS2000, etc etc mark II escort rs and then we've got here the rs 1600i which was produced in very limited numbers i believe uh, they mentioned it here more recently the great rs tradition has been maintained by the front wheel drive escort rs 1600i but now comes the most exciting car ever badged with those charismatic initials ford's new escort rs turbo let's carry on over the page and again, we've got the history of the RS line featured on pages 3 and 4. Again, references back to Mexico City, May 27th, 1970. Uh, Ford Escort driven by Hannah Mikkel and Gunnar Palm. have won the World Cup Rally 40 days and a mind-boggling 16,243 miles after leaving London. So there's no doubt that the RS Turbo was very much playing on Ford's history in motorsport. And you can't blame them because... Uh, they were super successful cars, and even in historic rallying today, Mark 1 and Mark 2 Escorts are everywhere. And who can blame them? So let's just carry on and find where the Escort RS Turbo gets a mention. Right, and here we are. The Escort RS Turbo, white hot. Like its illustrious predecessors, Ford's spine-tingling new Escort RS Turbo combines a sophisticated family car space versatility, comfort and drivability with all the nitty gritty potential to win rallies and races. It's been carefully developed by Ford's talented special vehicle engineering team whose other resounding successes include a Capri 2.8 injection and special, the Escort XR3i, Escort Cabriolet and Fiesta XR2. They are confident that the eye-catching Escort with its blend of advanced technology and traditional RS reliability will set new standards in Group N and Group A events. It is now the car to beat. Just like the rear-wheel drive RS Escorts which made such a tremendous impact on motorsport in the 1970s. Ford is building at least 5,000 RS Turbos, the minimum number required for homologation in Group A, and they are being sold only by official rally sport dealers. It's the first volume production turbocharged car to be manufactured in Europe by Ford, and also the first front-wheel drive car in the world to be fitted with a limited slip differential as standard equipment. The 1.6 litre fuel injected power unit develops an adrenaline pumping and the 132 PS at 6000 RPM, but is designed to be street flexible as well as potent. 
peak power and torque figures are respectively 26% and 30% higher than the XR3i's. The engine was basically a much modified 1600cc CVH engine. Uh, turbocharging was courtesy of a Garrett T3 and it also featured Bosch KE Jetronic fuel injection uh, coupled to a 5 speed gearbox. I don't believe any automatics were ever offered. Sport suspension similar to the concept in the RS1600i provides a comfortable ride plus razor sharp handling and huge reserves of grip from the wide ultra low profile tyres. And here, like I say, we have a side on view of a totally stock standard RS Turbo in, in the factory trim if you like. Uh, many of these cars were modified, fancy exhausts, bigger turbos, many were crashed, many have rotted away. So the survivors, those that are still in original condition, are a rare sight indeed. And they're quite coveted now by Ford collectors. Because not many were built, and very few survive. So let's carry on over here. And to the interior of the Escort. Uh, very comfortable Recaro seats. The rest of it's a bit of a sea of grey. Uh, but it does match this gentleman here in his uh, grey tweeds. The traditional sports car made you pay for your pleasure. It was noisy. Comfort and convenience were sacrificed for acceleration, top speed, handling and cornering. Luggage was no problem as long as you travelled with nothing more bulky than the telescopic toothbrush. Because of course hot hatches were all the rage back in the 1980s, uh, whereas previously if you wanted sporting thrills you were stuck with buying a two-seater. But as the 70s progressed and Golf GTI came along etc and the Fiat Bath, uh, the Strada, uh, and then the XR3 and the XR3i, people then had the option of practicality but also with performance and a fun drive and the 205 GTI and various later Golf GTIs built on that as does the current Ford uh, Focus RS so the, the interest has been around for a long long time but it was these early cars that really kicked off the hot hatch phenomenon so let's keep going along here Here we have some details on the engine itself. Turbo, the powerful solution. Ford's mile eating new Escort RS Turbo is based on a delightfully potent XR3i. But it has a lot more muscle thanks to the smooth efficiency of a Garrett Air Search T3 turbocharger. Although flexible and free from temperament, the 1.6 litre turbocharged engine punches out 26% more power than its naturally aspirated counterpart. Torque is increased by a massive 30% to provide vivid acceleration without dropping down through the 5 speed gearbox. And we've got some further details of how a turbocharger works, which is all described here in this diagram over here. And then we've got details about the intercooler and so on. Uh, we'll keep going a little bit further. If you've got one of these rare surviving cars, please pop a mention in the comments. I'd actually be interested to hear about these. I remember. Obviously this was just before I was driving, but I well remember how exciting these cars were when they were actually introduced. And, uh, so let's see what we have here. Turbo power on the road. Many facets of the RS Turbo scintillating character recall Ford's long-term role in the USA's space program. Uh, the electronic ignition system works in conjunction with a microprocessor, which offers full electronic control of the ignition advance. Stored digitally in the microprocessor is a three-dimensional map containing 256 preset timing points determined by exhaustive dynamometer testing. It makes sure that each spark plug is fired at its optimum ignition timing for any combination of engine speed, load and boost, etc. etc. Another shot of the interior. This is very similar to the, the view that we had years ago. We had a Mark III Escort gear, which was all very plush, but wouldn't really pull the skin off a rice pudding, um, which wasn't the case with the RS Turbo. Uh, up front ventilated disc brakes additionally cooled by ducts in the deep spoiler are balanced by rear drum brakes at the rear. The picture is completed by RS type light alley wheels with 6 inch rims for the Escort RS Turbo's ultra low profile Michelin MXV19550 VR15 tyres. The thoroughbred turbo sporting pedigree is proclaimed by body coloured mouldings for the bumpers, aerodynamic aids and radiator grille. The rear spoiler also matches the bodywork and that's the view most people are likely to get of the new fast Ford. Right until they ended up in a hedge, which I think is where a lot of RS turbos ended up. 
over here we have the facts and engineering interesting if you look at the gross vehicle weight is 1325 kilos now if you compare that to a modern Ford Focus RS which I believe is somewhere over 2000 kilograms now so whereas 132 PS at 6000 RPM might not sound much nowadays the car was a lot lighter than its modern counterpart um, so it still offered a spirited drive even if the numbers on paper don't sound that magical even now and over here we have some information on Ford's motorsport program the Escort RS Turbo is a motorsport enthusiast's dream come true a powerful reliable well-engineered car specifically designed to be a dominant force in rallies and races at home and abroad Ford is dedicated to building at least 5,000 because that is the minimum number stipulated by the international regulations for the sport Group N and Group A categories. Group N, a budget conscious class providing keen competition at a grassroots level, is for basically standard cars. It rules out any of the go faster modifications that can send co uh, cost soaring but calls for such sensible safety related features as a roll cage, a sump shield, a fire extinguisher and a switch to isolate the battery. All of these items and many others are detailed in the comprehensive Ford Motorsport Competition Parts Catalogue. It also lists parts for such lusty, long-serving old war horses as the Escorts which made their debut in the late 1960s. So even in the 1980s Ford was still producing uh, Go Faster kit for cars which were getting on for 15-20 years old. I found that quite interesting. Details of other publications that Ford Motorsport produced. And an intro to Group A. Uh, the standard Escort RS Turbo develops 132 PS at 6000 RPM and is a very potent performer, but power can be boosted to more than 200 PS for Group A competition work. That level of tuning must, of course, be accompanied by appropriate modifications to the suspension and brakes. Group A parts currently being tested for the Escort RS Turbo include suspension modifications catering for everything from racing to rallycross wider road wheels and adjustable rose jointed track control arms. Ford Motorsports development program also embraces a bigger sump with extra baffles to prevent the oil surging as the RS Turbo rockets around corners, a fly off hydraulic handbrake and a special brake pedal box which makes it a simple matter to adjust the pressure bias between front and rear. Other items include a close ratio 5 speed gearbox, a heavy duty gearbox casing and linkage, a light but strong aluminium roll cage and a steel box section mounted in the boot for the fuel pump and accumulator. These and the many other parts being tested for Group A homologation combined Ford Motorsports and rivaled expertise with lessons learned during the Escort RS Turbo's development. Test conditions raised from high speed circuits to the forests where escorts notched a unique sequence of eight consecutive RAC rally victories between 1972 and 1979. But the most important item is the ignition key. Turn it clockwise and you open the door to a new world of fast moving adventure. Ford Motorsport competition parts are designed for competition use and may not be suitable for normal road use. So there. And finally we go over here. And we just have confirmation that this was published by the Car Advertising Department of the Ford Motor Company Limited, Brentwood in Essex, January 1985. So that was the original sales brochure for the 1985 Ford Escort RS Turbo Series 1. There'd later be a Series 2 version based on the Mark IV Escort, but this is the original Mark III version. Um, I hope that was of interest to uh, fast forward and hot hatch fans in particular. Um, if you've ever owned one of these or you own one now, please pop a note in the comments and uh, click like on this video if possible. Um, if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and drop me a line if uh, there's anything particular that you'd like to see reviewed in this way. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.